Good everyone, welcome to another part and the last part of the Anime Style C tutorials. Um, in this tutorial we'll be covering how to do the wake and foam of the um, bigger ships. Um, they tend to make a bigger wave at the front and they tend to leave a, uh, the similar style in terms of the uh, foam at the back. Um, but this one has a little bit of a different element and that is that it has a different method for creating the waves at the front. It basically works with the same techniques as the um, small boat, but it has an addition. So let's get started. So as you can see, we already have a little um, very, very generic uh, version of an old frigate, and it's fairly easy to model. Um, however, this one barely contains any detail, but it just has enough for us to work with. So we'll be using this. I'm just going to have it push through um, a simple plane uh, that has been subdivided we can paint on it with dynamic paint so let's do that quickly so just let me just turn on screencast keys good now let's add a plane let's remove our 3d cursor so that it's nice and central where it's supposed to be there we go, close that again, and shift S to snap, say selection to cursor, and let's call this one C, tab into it, press U to unwrap it, tab out again, and now scale it up. Add a material to it, let's call this uh, C as well. Since we're not using an ocean modifier, it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, obviously, we'll be using tune shading. Let's use a nice deep blue. Something like that will do. 1.28. Uh, specularity, none. Uh, shading is fine. Transparency is fine. Options, full oversampling. Shadow, definitely receive transparent. That looks good. I think we're good here. Let's add a texture. I'm going to just open that and call this dynamic paint. And a dynamic waves. Normal influence. We might add color and other stuff to just make it a little bit stronger of a result later but uh, for the moment this was this is what we'll be working with let's just stick this one in the water it's going to be up to about there possibly a little higher yeah that'll be fine just take this back okay let's also center it on the X over here. Okay, that's nice. Let's give this a paintbrush. I use mainly the um, typical, but because we're using something that's pretty much like an empty shell, adding some proximity is a very good idea. So, using a paint distance of about 0.1 is fine. Let's just add brushes to these other stuff as well. In that case we can use mesh volume. In the case of this bottom part the same. And that should be good. I'm happy with that. Let's pull our boat through the water. Let's add a keyframe. Go only location. Go to 250. Pull it through the water. Somewhere around there, and just say location. Now go into your graph editor and just make this one extrapolate so that it stretches beyond. And now we need to see if this thing actually moves fast enough. So let's get rid of the C for the moment so that it plays smoothly. That's faster than a normal frigate would move, so we'll be sticking with this. So I'm going to remove the um, physical waves and I'm going to replace it with 
I'll need a phone. So to image sequence, 256 should be fine. Sub steps, at least one. Actually, it's not really necessary, it moves too slow. Uh, use paint, no dissolving, no color drying, that's for sure. Uh, the drying should be about 100 frames. You can leave this one on, it just means that brighter values tend to fade faster. That's consistent with foam, as far as I know. So let's call this boat to water. No paint maps, only wet maps. Initial color, you ignore that, you ignore this. I accept using spread, 1.5 is a good spread from what I remember. Uh, you don't need to select that, but you can if you want to. And let's bake this. Okay, with that baked, let's quickly add it. All you need to do is you just need to go to this directory and add the image as a sequence. So what you do is you go to your object where you just painted it on, you select your dynamic paint, and then you open the image. So do that. Now if you select everything, it says image sequence, and it also sets this up for you. So all you need to do is just match those, take out the alpha, since we're not using alpha at all. And you also can turn the MIP map off. This is usually um, used to generate lower resolution maps if something gets a certain distance from the camera. It's like a level of detail. Not really necessary to adjust these, but I adjust them anyway, just for a little bit more clarity. And that should be fine. We don't need the color. Let's just look at the trail. You see, I think that's a little too intense. Let's reduce the spread and redo that. See, this is why it's important to check your stuff the whole time. So let's reduce the spread to be... I think one will be fine. Instead of 1.5. Okay, that seems fine. Let's bake this. Okay, it just baked, so let's refresh the sequence. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Actually, you know, it's still bothering me. Let's let's reduce it to by like 0.5 or something, something extreme. It's just too much, you know. Let's try 0.5. Okay, now let's refresh our sequence again. Go there, go there, and click. I think this one will be, yeah, let's see, I'm happy with this. So we will stick with this. Okay, let's quickly set up our texture for the foam. We'll be using the same method as in the previous tutorial. So just untick that and add a new one and call this one uh, foam and in parentheses, no texture. That's good. Now open your node editor, select use nodes, close this, otherwise it causes issues with the graphics. I don't know why, but it does. You can close that as well. So what I need you to do is I need you to add three groups of two color ramps. So you can just do, oh dear, okay, and duplicate that, and duplicate that. What I do to duplicate is I just um, select them and I press Shift D, and to add something I just press Shift A. So like that, just so it's a little bit more easier. Okay, so say input and select texture and select your dynamic paint texture. Let me just zoom in. Uh, this one over here, dynamic paint, and stick that into the first color ramp of every group. Just need to take this one down a little bit further. Okay, that's fine. And now we need to also add a curve time node. This one will be powering our uh, translate nodes, which will move our texture so that they are not static on the water. Since the water is always moving, the foam's always moving, you need that little bit of movement. So add three cloud textures. Each one will be a different basis for a different section of the foam. The first one will be a basic cloud texture. That's no 
special thing. It's, it is a special thing, but it's just not, uh, you know, like, wow, cloud text. <laughs> Uh, send this one as a, a f2 minus f1 with a, a single base, a single depth. And of course, this last one should be a. You can use f2 if you want to, but you can also use a single uh, cloud texture. But this one will be inverted over the other stuff because this one will be the dissipation, this one will be our medial uh, medium part of the foam and this one will be our initial foam at the back of the boat so add a translate node to each of those let's just try and stick it in there okay there we go same over here and same over here now you take this uh, curve time node and you add a math node from the converter category and you multiply the value by 0.1 this gives us a decent movement as far as the textures are concerned. The reason we're not using a higher value is because it um, moves fairly fast as it's moving on all three axes. So let's put that in there. Let's move that over. We want to keep our setup quite neat and tidy. If it's not, you struggle to find what you're looking for. Just like in the previous tutorial, I wasn't sure which texture I was actually adjusting. You don't want that. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Now what you also need to do is you need to add math nodes to every group and set it to less than. So add another set here and select less than. I'm going to show you in a second what less than does. Let's just duplicate this one so I can show you. Add a blend texture or a noise texture. Let me just take a blend and a cloud. Show it the best. Stick one in here, stick one in there, and say output viewer. I want to show you what it does. See what it does. Basically, it um, figures what is less than um, one of these two values. I don't know which one. And it calculates it to be an integer value. So you do not get any gray in between shades when you use a less than or greater than value. So this makes it absolutely perfect for tune shading. So um, that's just a quick this demonstration of what it does. So just hook those up. We'll be using a viewer node to adjust each section so we're sure we're, we're actually getting a good result. So use an output viewer node so we can see what this looks like. See already we have a color problem. So we need to flip that around and we need to shrink it down. It's influence, it needs to be shrunk down. Oh, texture also needs to be shrunk down. <laughs> so let's go like 0 0.1 on this. Just wanna see a good amount of change there. Okay, that increases the size. We want it to be minimal about there. Let's flip this around. No, we want to keep it like this. Yeah, this is good. Let's shrink it further because the ship is rather large. So let's go 0 0.05, 0 0.02 if necessary. Okay, that's fine for now. So let's do the second one. I see again, need to flip that around. No, 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 not that one, this one. No, actually this one. And then flip that one around. See, we do want it to be smaller too. So also about 0 0.1. No, smaller than that. Let's try 0 0.05. That's okay. Let's see. And don't want it to go too far. Okay, that's fine. Now this one has to be like this, this black area over here. And we just need to don't want it to overdo it, you know. So also need to shrink this one down. And since point one is a good value for the moment, let's use that. Okay, now we need to increase this one. There we go. Okay, needs to go out fairly far. And then we invert this. So we can go color, click on invert. And this will multiply over 
the, the rest of the stuff. So now you can start adding some mix nodes. For the first ones, these two, uh, we'll be using an add and we'll be multiplying the last one. So go add one, set a clamp, you can see that, and let's add a multiply. Oop, dear. Okay, multiply. It has to go into the second because think of as uh, think of color one as your base. Whatever is applied to number one goes into color two. So if you want to multiply something over something else, what you want something multiplied over is color one, and what you want multiplied over is color two. Very simple. <laughs> So I just stick that in there and set this to multiply and if you add a color ramp to this you won't get that strange add problem that the nodes give out. Okay that's good and now just make the black transparent and make it white. It's nice and that should be good. So let's quickly see what that looks like in 3D view as we go top side. Let's move the ship along further so we can see almost the entire wake. Let's go exactly top side and go rendered. It's a little too much though. Let's decrease it. Let's go solid. No, I want to see this one over here. Okay, that makes it stronger. We want to make it a little bit weaker about there. So let's see what that looks like. That looks not, doesn't look bad at all. Let's see what happens if I turn off the multiplication now. Actually, you know what? Let's add a gray one. I think that just might do the trick. Let's make this one 0.999. Okay, that's better. It's not functioning right. Let's add multiplication again. Okay, I'm happy with that. So let's close this for the moment and go solid. We only need to add some foam to the boat. So let's add a plane and let's just quickly model something that will go along with the boat's front side. So let's, uh, oh, we, need, we don't need to uh, tap this to unwrap it. Only slightly, don't need it to be excessive. It's very, very limited. Okay, that's nice. Scale that out a little bit. Okay, a little bit more. Remember, you want the uh, to retain a sense of scale, so don't overdo it with these settings. Okay, about there so that it pushes through the waves. And let's add some subdivision. Ah, loop cuts. Sub it's not subdivision, it's loop cuts. Hey, hey, hey. 
something like that. Okay. For the sake of ease, let's just add a few of these. Okay. It's good enough. Okay, now for the difficult part. Now we need to scale these to work with the boat. No, not those. We're going to be using a sharp. So scale it along the X. It's like it's not severe enough. I'm going to select all these at the front so that it cooperates. Scale along the Y. Hey, there we go. That's more like it. Okay, that's good. Now select the outer parts, those, and draw them inward with a smaller influence, something like that. And then draw these frontal parts out more. Don't need to select every one of them, you just need to select a few so you can stretch it forward, like that. Okay, now if you want to, I definitely recommend adding a few loop cuts specifically at the front about like that will do and we are good I think now let's just scale this one out slightly not heavily just slightly and Take it back so that it forms sort of like a trail. A little bit more. Uh, we can just increase the influence and pull it out uh, slightly further to be about there. Okay, and then we need to drag most of this down to be below the surface. Something along those lines. Okay. Now select your edges. Like that. And extrude them down. Doesn't need to be too far, it just needs to be out of influence reach. Uh, so it's just for the sake of making it proper, do that. Okay, that's nice. Now let's just add a displacement to that. Let's call this uh, wake waves and set it to global. And let's select the texture, go clouds. After we add some subdivision, I can see that we're going to be needing some. Set it to simple. And it seems to be working better if we set it to set setting so let's go smooth and we need to drastically reduce the effect and the size of the texture it's a little too sharp let's add more subdivision it's fine for now we can definitely reduce this to be about one and now we can reduce the effect thereof Remember, this is very, very, very minute. Okay, we can seem to be scaling it out a little bit more. At least along these edges over here. Let's just go Y. With proportional editing turned on, of course. Not that big. Somewhere along these lines. See what that does. That's good. I think it still needs more subdivision. Yeah, that's fine. And it needs to be a lot less intense as well. Something like that will do nicely. So let's see how that. Oh dear. I have to parent to the boat. Otherwise, it's not going to move. So go object, and now you can slightly move it. I still want to take these down. They're still too intense 
in terms of its visibility. So let's try that. Yeah, that's fine. It'll transition into the foam, so it's not too much. What is too much is this over here. I just want to take that also down a little bit more. So uh, let's use smooth and let's reduce our influence also by a lot. So it does something along these lines. Yes, like that. Needs to go further out as well, something like that. Not too much. And some of these to cooperate as well. Try something like that. Oh dear. Right. Needs to be smaller, the influence. See what that looks like when it moves. Let's wait for it. See, that's good. See how it dissipates at the back. Okay, that's great. Okay, that's nice. Okay, let's save that. That's nice. And quickly give it a material. Say new. Call this foam. Let's make it tune shaded. 1.28. No specularity. Shading. And give it 100% translucency. Transparent. No auto rebias. Full oversampling. And take that back a little bit. Not that much. Still needs to be visible. Okay, let's take this. And I want to see what this looks like when we render. So, let's click that. That looks nice. I really like the look of this. It's a little too intense here at the back. I think. I think we should drastically reduce that. So let's go back to that. I know we've been there before, but uh, -uh you know, it's it does leave a good trail. Don't get me wrong, but the ship moves so slow that it does dissolve very quickly. Um, so for the moment, I actually want to take it back so far that it's almost only like getting about to there. So let's go viewer. I want to use this one so that goes over there. Uh, this one I think is fine. Yes, that's fine. This one is not fine. This one has to be way, 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 way less. That goes to there, and this goes way down. Let's see how far that goes. Let's delete that. If I turn this black, and set this to greater than, it should get rid of it. Yeah, it does. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. We need to definitely up some textural influence in terms of the foam breaking up. No, not that one. Set this to ease. Let's try something like that and giving it a little bit more to play with. Something like that. That's actually very nice. Okay. So you see, I didn't give it too much of an adjustment in terms of its scale, but I did adjust the um, thickness of the texture. So let me quickly show you what that looks like in terms of the texture. Uh, let's just up the scale so I can show you properly. It's not responding the way I wanted to. Okay, that's why. So let's go 0 0.02, 0 0.02, 0 0.02. Okay, 
Now you can see I just up the contrast of this texture so that it affects the influence basically like that. Okay, so let's get rid of that. I am happy with this. I just want to reduce the size further to be about 0.1. I want to see how that affects the foam. Still too big. I'm going to go even less. I'm going to go 0.005. That's again too small. So let's go 8. Too small. I think we should just keep it at 0.01. Yeah, something along these lines. That's good. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, hit solid. Now for most scenes or for most ships, this will be absolutely fine as they move very slowly. Um, but I do know that when ships tend to move a little bit faster, they have uh, waves that are um, pushing up against the ship uh, that you really, 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 really want to add if you have like a submarine or a modern frigate um, pushing through the water. So in order to add those, all you need to do is add a cone or whatever you want to use as a control shape. I prefer a cone. Um, then you need to add a circle. They really do need to be aligned. Now let's just model a little bit into this cylinder to create a... It's almost like a, a wheel that's going to be um, doing our foam for us. Needs to have some thickness not too much. Something like that will be fine for now. We're going to be distorting this, obviously. So just select a few parts. Fairly even. So let's skip three. I don't know if skipping three is going to end up being even or not. Hey, look at that. It's been, it ended up being even. Okay, now you can pull these down. Make sure you give enough influence for that. Let's use something like that. That should be fine. Now go above it using 7. Select everything. Press U. Unwrap. Project from view. Bounce. So that you see something like this when you look at the projection. And now we're going to texture it to work with our project. So let's call this uh, foam or wake wheel. Add a new material to it, or you can just pick something that's already in existence, like the foam, and call this wake wheel. And go texture. Say new, call this one, uh, let's say foam and go down and select another one and call this one let's call it water texture okay for the water texture I want you to actually let's yeah it's called water texture uh, select clouds go ramp go hard and set this to ease actually constant not ease my bad switch this around so that you have the lines. Oh, reduce the depth to be at zero. Okay, that's good. Just don't make it too thick. And select your ocean color. Make it opaque. Select the ocean color. Up the value. Something like that should do it. That's nice. We're not using UV, we're using generated. If you want to, you can set this to global as well. Setting it to global is a little bit too slow for my taste. So you can just keep that on color. And select foam and select blend. And make this a quadratic sphere. The reason we're using a quadratic sphere is because we only want foam on the outer edges. So set this also to constant. Flip it around so that your 
foam is only on the edges. So now if you were to just smooth this out quickly and view this area, you would see only that. So now the trick is to just scale the foam down far enough so we have very little of it. So let's go 0.005. Okay, I'm going to have to less than that. Let's go for one. That's nice, I like that. Then it gets a little bit of a rough edge over there. Okay, that's nice. Now go solid. And now we need to animate this particular shape. So press a keyframe. Go rotation, go at 250, rotate it along the z-axis, doesn't matter how far you rotate it, it just needs to rotate. And now we need to go into the graph editor and fix it so that it's consistent, linear. Now if you play this back, you'll see that it moves nice and in sync. So what I need to do is I need to parent that to your cone. So that when you rotate the cone and you run through it, you see that the disk still spins correctly. So I just want to get that back to this side. Now I wanted you to duplicate this. Push it over. And I just want to see... Yeah, we need to reverse the direction on this one, so just keep that selected. Open the graph editor and say S Y minus one. No, not that, just the one. I want Z only. Let's just lock the others. S Y minus one. Now if you look at that, you'll see they move like that against each other. So this one will be on that side and you will have one tilted this way and the other one tilted the other way. Okay, that's good. Now we need our control objects which will turn these into teardrops, uh, teardrop shapes. So add a plane and let's call this control object one. Add a modifier to the circle, sorry. And you use, where's that cast? Use cast. You can keep it to sphere and use control object one. The factor needs to be set to three. So if you were to move this now, after selecting these again, there we go. See, haha. -ha. Now we have our control object causing a teardrop shape. Oh dear, just want the shape selected. Okay, you do need it to be a little bit tilted like that, so that now when it moves, you can see that it still operates like it's supposed to. So you can up the factor to just make it a little bit more intense if you want to. It's not really necessary. Uh, the radius, I wouldn't touch these if I were you, say, um, the size. Okay, that's nice. That's good. If you move that. Okay, we just need to group this one to the um, cone as well. So just say object. And you can duplicate this if you want to, or you can just link this one to that same control object. I would not recommend doing that. So just add another one and call this one. Control object number two. And go modifier, say cast sphere three. Control object two. Actually, we can just up this. What did I set this one to? I set this one to four. 4.17, that's nice, I like this. And we need to just parent this as well. Okay, now we're about to take this to the ship. 
think it's minus nine. Oh dear. Z minus 19. Okay, Z plus 180. Okay, now we need to just rotate this along the X axis so that it's nice and angled. Something like that should do. And let's try and position this one first. I have to scale it way down. If you want to, you can also up the scale of this. Something like that. Scale it down further. Take this in here. Oh, this needs to be scaled way, way down. It needs to be way up in the front of the boat. Let's just change the angle a little bit. Like that. A little bit more. I want the focus of these wakes to be on the front of the boat, specifically this um, hard part. About there-ish. Let's take this way down to be in here. Just want to rotate it out slightly. So that it's just about like that. So now if you play this, you'll see that it reacts ridiculously. Uh, <laughs> you do need to parent the cone to the boat as well. So that if you move it, and the boat comes by, you'll see that it sticks to the boat. Something like that. So now you just do the exact same thing with the other cone. Let's try and take it down a little more. It's like it's just too intense. And a little bit inward, not too far, and a little bit back. If you want to, you can also um, up the, uh, what do you call it? <sighs> Help me. The you can solidify it. Thank you. That's the term I was looking for. You can solidify the foam objects here at the front, which I think we should do in this particular case. Okay, now I just want to select both cones and move them back. So I want to see where the other cone is. The other cone should be around here somewhere. There it is. I just want to move these back a little bit. So that it really does look like it's cutting through and causing them. That's nice. It's a little bit over. Okay, now let's thicken these out. So add a solidify modifier. And let's extend this inward just so that it shows. Oh, here. Where's the other cone? I want to parent it quickly before I forget. <laughs> object okay that's fine now let's try this again on this side solidify other way get some thickness not too much something along these lines that should do it and we should be golden Now let's just see what this looks like from a camera view. Where's our camera? When I position the camera, I like to use the second view. Go in towards the boat, go down, go a little forward, turn it sideways and along. Go down. Oh. When that happens, go down and across again, something along these lines, and let's tilt it slightly upward. See, again, it's a little bit too large. It's fine. Let's just see what this looks like. Yeah, that looks good. I'm happy with this. Now, all we need to do is just add some um, waves to the sea, since the sea is typically not as flat as this. 
So let's take this one down a notch and make it a cloud texture. Ramp, obviously. Uh, no color influence, but definitely normal influence. Let's just select a small section so we can see what we're doing. And say rendered. Oh dear, that's way too big. Let's go 5. What about 48? Yeah, 48 seems to be the correct size. Let's reduce this. I don't want the influence to be ridiculously high. Uh, let's view it with the ship's wake. Ah, oh, that looks good. I really like this. Now we just need to animate it. And no, we're not going to set this to global. <laughs> it's not practical. Uh, now go generate it. It might, it's, it's actually going to change the size, so let's stick with UV. Okay, that's fine. Let's add an, a keyframe over here. Set this to insert single keyframe. And over here, set this to minus one. And insert a single keyframe. Go into your graph editor. Extrapolation. And that should actually do it. I want to select a section with the boats invisible. So I'm going to actually try to move everything pertaining to the ship so that it's not a hindrance to us testing this. Go to number two. Now I can select a piece without worrying about it. Okay. Let's select a different section I want to see. The water's movement. I think our problem is the z-axis and it not being generated. Let's try now. Yeah, see now it's all crazy like. Okay, let's change our z. Let's reduce the depth as well to be about 1. Okay, let's try that now. It's changing way too fast. So let's set this to minus 0.05 and replace that single keyframe. Let's try that now. It's nicer. Okay. Now for a simple adjustment over here, setting the environment lighting to 1, just to soften that up. Gather is still 0 in the distance attenu attenuation distance, and the samples are still 1. If you want to, you can add some clouds to the horizon. It's not necessary. I just want to see the foam. Foam works good. Go solid. Add the ship back. And let's do another quick render of this together. Let's try something along these lines. And that's basically it. Now let's, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just be animating this in a bit of a more creative way and that will be the example that will be at the start of the tutorial. Um, thank you for watching. I hope this method blesses you and that you are able to use it in your own projects in um, amazing ways. Uh, have a great day and God bless.